Uh, I am very honored to be here uh, with all of you. I'm joined uh, by Mike Kanapik, someone that you may know uh, as a former state senator here in the west, western part of the state, more particularly Westfield. We had the honor of serving together when I was in the House of Representatives. And he is now the d director of our our affairs office for Western Mass with an office in Springfield. And I also have Caitlin McGinnis here with me today. And it's a pleasure to be here in Southampton. And I think our more recent connection was when this community signed into our Commonwealth's Community Compact Program. And I was just getting an update uh, from you on the three best practices that you've chosen to work on. Some of them involved a government uh, restructuring or looking at uh, the way this community is organized and seeing if it can be done in a better way. Uh, the other is on the department structure as well and wage and job classification. And those are all uh, excellent initiatives as we uh, come together around municipal government. Uh, I'm actually chairing a work group that is studying how to recruit more people into municipal government and making that a career choice, especially with the economy uh, expanding and taking this talent, particularly in the area of financial services, accounting, uh, treasurers into the private sector, where we are running uh, a shortfall of people with the right skills for municipal government. So we're organizing uh, a number of initiatives to work with our educational partners and, and recruit people to work. There is, I think, nothing more rewarding than growing up in a community and then being able to serve your community in one of these professional roles to strengthen local government, deliver good services, because it's all very important for the next generation, you know, especially here in Western Massachusetts. As we're concerned about declining populations in some areas, we need to make sure that the schools are good, that we're doing everything we can to create more jobs and opportunities for, for people, and then you need that health and safety piece so that that safety net is in place everywhere in, in all of the communities. And you're doing that by studying how you can organize your municipal government in a better way to serve the next generation uh, who choose to live here and lay their roots here, uh, your sons and your daughters, uh, the, the people who are from here. Uh, I came, come here today relative to our MassWorks program. Our MassWorks program is the largest infrastructure program that the state uh, operates. And under our administration, we increased the amount of funding to half a billion dollars of authorization. Uh, these dollars are needed in regions and in municipalities across our Commonwealth uh, to improve local you know, roads and, and projects, and they can be leveraged to attract private investment, whether it's for housing developments or commercial developments or industrial developments, which expands the tax base in communities, brings more people to an area. When you bring more people to an area, what do they need? More shops, more services. Uh, more entertainment, and that is, in essence, economic development. Here, uh, at your East Street project, uh, it needs sort of a, a push. And by this million dollar investment in this project, we're able to work with you to design and reconstruct the bridge, which will then open up the opportunity to further improve East Street, which I understand is a main corridor here in Southampton and needs to be improved. And but for this investment, it might just remain on the tip and not ever get to the front, or at least not fast enough. So we're very happy to make this kind of investment as a catalyst for the change that's needed here in this community. And it just is another example of how state government and municipal government should and must work together, and, and because neither one of us can do, can do this alone. Uh, we have so far 309 of these best practice compacts now signed. Uh, and you were one of the early uh, signers of yours, and I expect to get to every single community. So everyone is working on something to improve their community. There's always a better or best practice that you can incorporate into your line of work. And we're seeing this all across the landscape of Massachusetts. So our vision is we're going to make Massachusetts a stronger and better uh, state, but we're going to do it through 
the 351 cities and towns, through the grassroots, through municipal government, through the public workforce at the local level. Um, in, eight, in each place and in each region, uh, really uh, playing up the strengths and opportunities. And that's exactly what we're celebrating uh, here today. Uh, finally, I want to thank all of you for your, uh, your choice of being in municipal government and serving this community. You are the people who wake up every day here that think about this community, worry about this community, believe in this community, and are making decisions to prepare it for the future. And you know, that's to be commended. I also want to thank your public safety officials because you are literally on the front lines dealing with a lot of challenges. Uh, we all know that the, the opiate epidemic is everywhere in this commonwealth, in rural Massachusetts, suburban, uh, and urban, and unfortunately there are no boundaries, and you're, you're forced in your department uh, to deal with some very, very challenging circumstances. Uh, the, the governor, our legislature, we're doing a lot of good work here in this Commonwealth, particularly on the healthcare side, to limit the exposure that people are having to opiate, which then leads to uh, more serious uh, drug use. And unfortunately, in Massachusetts and other places, you're seeing uh, synthetic drugs now coming into the communities like fentanyl or carfentanyl, which are lethal. Uh, so we need to work very closely with our uh, law enforcement public safety partners to tamp down on that trafficking of uh, illicit drugs that are, are literally killing people. I'll give you one statistic and then turn it back over to you and answer any questions that you have and learn a little bit more about your project. Uh, in 2016, of all of the deaths associated with opiates, 14% were opiate fentanyl deaths. In 2017, the deaths so far that we have data on, 80% uh, of the deaths, opiate deaths, are related to fentanyl. So you can see in just that one year period of time, in the data that we're collecting informs us that a lot of it is being uh, driven by these, uh, these the synthetic opiates that are, are lethal. So we will continue to work with you on that epidemic continue to work hard to strengthen your community, whether it's through MassWorks dollars or best practices or whatever other grants uh, you might be interested in, whether it's an IT grant for more technology to embed in local government or it's an efficiency and regionalization grant. You can work with your, your neighbors around how to find economies of scale and think about your area as a region as opposed to a standalone community. We have the planning organization here that does a fantastic job in this part of the state doing a lot of that regional thinking and we're really happy that you would be here as well. And I just want to come and say thank you, commend you on where you're at, and let's continue to work uh, hard uh, going forward to seek out and fulfill the dreams that you have for this community. Uh, so with that, maybe you can give me a, a little update on the East Street project, the timing and the scope, and uh, what else I can do to be of assistance to you today. Sure. Um, first, for your amusement, <laughs> I, I went to grammar school here. I love this. So this okay. was, a, yeah. was, this, was this first grade? or This was like third grade. Third grade. <laughs> OK. And, and it was a strange thing, because when I came back in this room, those windows have gotten extremely short compared to what they were when I <laughs> But I... This is a beautiful repurpose of, of a building. I mean, the way, the, where it's situated is fantastic. And then when I came, I said, wow, this is quite a, a town hall. Uh, so you have a lot of space here to do your work. I, I would love to take you to the front we afterwards go. just we for go. the walk. Yeah. But I'm very, very proud of this community. I'm very pleased with to see how this project came down. We're hoping to move forward on a number of other projects. Uh, we still need to address our fire department, our police department. We also have to deal with our infrastructure. But your programs are helping us. We are acknowledging that. We're moving forward with things. The grants that you've given us so far for the analysis of stuff in town, like pay grades and structure and that, are the foundations to get us moving. They start the dialogue. As you know, local government is slow. It takes a process, but it is moving. In the last couple of years, I've watched this move in this community. But let's talk about East Street. Okay. <laughs> the East Street project 
an overview of this project is it's the necessity for our town to develop an economic growth is to get this bridge repaired. This bridge is the key link to the arteries through this town for our residents to move here and there to go to work, to come back home, and so on and so forth. If you were to look at this, and I have a bigger picture, uh, the community is basically a bedroom community that is supporting the surrounding communities for economic growth. All the economic growth that's happening in Hoyoke, Westfield, Northampton, East Hampton, and all that, a lot of the people are moving into Southampton to live, calling it their home. They need that transportation, they need that artery to move forward. Uh, the artery or the bridge also is linkage for us for Route 91 and 90. So that is key. I'll blow this up a little bit for you. Uh, if you were to look at this just from where we are, uh, the town hall, if I can get my laser printer to the private, yeah. That worked good, didn't it? It worked a minute ago, but now it don't. All right, we'll make it easy. Okay. Town hall is actually up in here, that spot where it says Southampton. The bridge is right here. As you can see, when you look at this, this bridge is the main artery from the center of town to Hoyoke, East Hampton, Westfield, 91, 90, all the rest of that. Also, Southampton has developed a 100-car parking lot recreational facility here. We are now looking at building a greenway. That's what the dotted lines are for a railroad bed. So that greenway is going to also increase traffic flow, pedestrian, all the rest of that. And so if you took that bridge out of the equation, you can see that we would have people traveling miles just to try to get to the city of Hoyoke. Now, the best part about this is I, I like a little history. No, this is not a car on the bridge, okay? But it's a great way of thinking about this. That bridge was built 80 to 90 years ago, and that's the kind of cars we drove. Do you really think that it's time to address this bridge? <laughs> Back then, the cars were a lot simpler. And the population in town was less than 100,000. It's over 600,000 now. No, 6,000. 6, I've been in Springfield too long. You know? <laughs> no, so no, we've gone from 1,000 people to 6,000 people. And the way the town's growing, I would expect in the next 5 to 10 years, we're going to hit 7,000. There's just an awful lot of subdivisions and everything else going in this town. And the houses in this town are going for about fairest number, half a million, you know. So that's because of the economic growth that's happening in the region. Now this is last winter on this bridge. Because the decking is so old, it's deteriorating to the point where that when the ice works it out, it goes right to the deck and then the highway department is forced to go out there and mostly manually try to patch this to secure it. But they are literally patching on top of patching. If you talk about pedestrians, you can see that there is no place. And if you were to take a look at the, the way this is guardrails and everything else on the side of it, they are token. They really do not function. Uh, I mean, everyone looks at it and says, okay, it's concrete and steel, but the reality of it is if it's rusted out that way visibly, I suspect that there's a lot more deterioration that you just don't see. And this is the other side of the bridge, same situation. There is no pedestrian safe way. And now we're talking about building a bike path. We're putting sidewalks in. People are getting on bicycles more. They're becoming more mobile in the, in the sense of walking for health and all the rest of that. That's a bottleneck. So 
So just going back to this for a quick review. The star is where the bridge is. You can see it as a major artery. The town of Southampton is presently doing design work from basically that star to the town hall center to rebuild East Street. That is on the tip plan. It's 25% done so far because we're presently working to push the Glendale Road, which is another project that was ahead of this. This has been going on for 18 years. And then it was brought to the selectman's attention by the highway superintendent, and the select board basically decided that it's time to move this thing, and we've been pushing to get this going. So it's rainy. It's not just me. It's rainy. It's Jimmy Labrie. It's John Martin. The, the whole board has been moving this. They just made me the front man. <laughs> the bridge is a key link to all surrounding communities. With the rebuilding of this corridor, it will enhance the econ economic growth of this area. It's not just going to improve things for Southampton. It's going to help our neighboring communities as well. Because the residents that are in this town work and some live in those other communities. Any questions from anybody? Thoughts? So, what's the next step? So, uh, have you been able to uh, scope the project to hire the engineering staff? We have the engineering staff already hired. The engineering staff has been given their marching orders to take and now start the design phase of it. We've already met with DOT indirectly. They're fully aware of the fact that this is going to be a priority. So the next step at this point is to wait for our engineers to put together the preliminary designs and stuff. And then we'll have a meeting with DOT, and then we'll start moving that forward. Randall, you have anything to say with that? Yes. Oh. I'm not sorry. And then I will definitely make sure that you're contacted. Very good. <laughs> my hope, my hope, and I always say my hope, is that we see construction at the beginning of July. Oh, that was my next question. That I is. want to hit the, the construction season. Yes. Right. Uh, that, that would be paramount because the next phase of that is the next tip to try to get money for East Street in and of itself. And then, of course, the other phase is the other end of East Street. But this end of East Street has everything from the town hall, the police station, the library, the parks. You know, right. everything is right connected to that one street. On the bridge itself, will you be widening the bridge as part of that design? The hope is to widen the bridge and the uh, Federal standards are requiring two sidewalks. I don't know where that's going to fall at this point. Okay. So you would anticipate a wider bridge that would encompass a right lane? I hope. Yeah. That, that would be that the ideal thing would be to take and make the sidewalk wide enough to be the bike lane okay. and get them off that dip. But I'm not an engineer. Okay. But the idea is going to be that if that greenway goes through in the next few years, you're going to see people on bikes going down that street and heading to the Labrie Field on Strong Road, okay? Because that's got a baseball diamond, soccer fields, little kids stuff and everything else down there. So you're going to see people coming down that bike path, hitting that street to head up Strong Road to go to that park. Do you anticipate a year from now the bridge being I would love to say that it's going to be completed by early winter. That would be what we are discussing, the chiefs, highway department, water, has been to take this a very aggressive approach, shut the road down, not put a, a temporary bridge in. Shut the street down, basically redirect traffic for six months. That way we can work faster and cleaner on the project. The residents I've spoken to all have been nodding, yes, we're willing to, to tolerate that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. I've been making some arrangements to have a substation on the other side in town where we have officers be able to not always have to come back to the main station, be able to be stationed on the other side of the bridge um, for a quicker response to that side of town. Yeah, we do have a substation on the other side of town, so utilizing that for that time period. Yeah. But it's a challenge. We're going to all be inconvenienced. There's no question about it. We need to protect the public, 
but we also have to acknowledge the fact that even though a million dollars sounds like a lot of money, it's not a finite amount of money. We're, we're, we still have to stay within budget. It looks like the town's going to be putting in about $300,000 to get the engineering work and all the rest of that going. Very good. I'm happy to be able to see it there. Obviously, it will take a ride over and see it myself. So just, just don't stop there because get there's. A sense <laughs> how important it is to the oh. connection uh, to your community, and I saw that in the visual here today. Okay. So thank you, Charlie. Thank, thank you. you.